In this scenario, we want to find out how long it's going to take us to commute to campus given the following constraints. In other words, we want to minimize our travel time. The first step is to draw a diagram to visualize the situation. So our plan is to walk from home to a subway stop and then take the subway to campus. So let's add our home and then let's add the campus. And we know there's a subway line that goes into the campus, so we'll add that. And then the perpendic perpendicular distance from the home to the subway is one kilometer, so let's add that. And then we also know that the straight line distance from your home to the campus is 10.05 kilometers, so we'll add that too. We'll call this point here H for home, this point here C for campus, and this point here P for the perpendicular distance from home to the subway line. The perpendicular distance is one kilometer, so we can add that here. That's one kilometer. And the straight line distance from home to campus, or HC, is 10.05 kilometers, so we'll add that as well. Now let's think about ways that we could get to campus. We could, if we wanted to, one way would be to walk directly from home all the way to campus, assuming there is a road to walk along. And if we did that, how long would that take us? Well, it says up here that our walking speed, average speed, is 5 kilometers per hour. So let's write that down. Speed walking is 5 kilometers per hour. The distance we have to walk is 10.05 kilometers. So we have to find the time it's going to take us to walk that distance. Now time is going to be distance divided by speed, and if we didn't remember that, we can just get it from the units. If speed is distance over time, so if we wrote that down as speed is equal to distance over time, then time would be distance divided by speed. We just have to cross multiply these parts right here. All right, let's just erase that. So we know that our time would be distance 10.05 divided by speed, which is 5 kilometers per hour. And if we did that, we'd end up with a little over 2 hours, 2.01 hours. Another option at the other extreme is to walk from home to the subway line and then take the subway all the way into campus. So the total time in that situation would be the time it takes us to walk to the subway and the time it takes us to drive the subway into campus. So our walking speed would still be 5 kilometers per hour, but our distance that we have to go to walk is only 1 kilometer. So let's change that out. Our distance would only be 1 kilometer in this scenario. And our time in this case would be 1 divided by 5, or 1 kilometer divided by the speed of 5 kilometers per hour, which leaves us with 0 decimal 2 hours. So we can add that here, 0 decimal 2. And we'd have to add the uh, time it takes us to get then from P to C along the subway line. So our speed for the subway is given as 15 kilometers per hour average speed, which is given in the question right there. But what about our distance along the subway line? How do we figure that out? Well, we have a right angle triangle here, so we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the distance PC. So using Pythagorean theorem, PC squared plus 1 squared is equal to 10.05 squared. Recall that this distance squared plus this distance squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So that would give us PC squared equals or plus 1 equals 101. So PC squared equals 100 minus 1 or 100. So PC will be uh, 10. So that distance is 10 kilometers. And we can put that in here as well. 
So our time for this scenario, the time for the subway, would be given by distance divided by speed, which is two-thirds, or 0 0.67 hours. So we can add that in here, 0 0.67 hours. And if we add those two together, we end up with 0 0.87 hours for the uh, total time. And that's a lot better than the two hours we got originally by just walking. So these two scenarios are the extremes here and here. But is there another option that we could do in order to get to campus? Well, we don't have to walk directly to the subway line. Maybe we could walk a little bit at an angle towards the subway line to shorten the subway ride distance and then take it in from there, assuming there is a subway stop along here. So let's add that scenario to our diagram. We'll walk a little bit towards the, at an angle towards the subway line and we'll call that point that we get to Q and then take the subway from Q into campus. Again, our total time then would be the time we spend walking plus the time we spend on the subway. But it will not be the same values here. We'll have a little bit more walking time, but a little bit less subway time. Our speed for walking and our speed for the subway average speed will not change. Those will be the same. But we'll need to adjust our distances. And then, of course, that'll change our times as well. So to get our distance walking along here, we, again, we have a right angle triangle, and this would be the hypotenuse. So we can get that distance hq by 1 squared plus pq squared will equal hq squared. Let's simplify it up a little bit by making this distance pq to be an x. And then let's get rid of this old calculation here. So we know that hq squared will equal 1 squared plus x squared. And so our distance hq would equal the square root of 1 plus x squared. So that's our distance walking, the square root of 1 plus x squared. Now what about our distance on the subway, qc? Well, if this total distance PC is 10 kilometers and PQ is X, then the distance from Q to C would be 10 minus X. And that would be our distance on the subway. So our time would be on walking would be distance divided by speed or the square root of 1 plus X squared divided by 5, and our time on the subway would be 10 minus x divided by 15. So let's move those down now into our time function. And I'm going to write this as 1 fifth, 1 plus x squared to the 1 half for our time walking. And then for the time on the subway, we're just going to take each of these terms over 15. So 10 over 15 minus x over 15. This will make our finding the derivative a little bit easier. We want to minimize time, so we're finding the derivative of the total time. And we're going to set that equal to 0. So if we take the derivative of our first term right here, we're going to use the um, power and chain rules here. So we would get 1 tenth. 1 plus x squared to the negative a half times the derivative of um, 1 plus x squared, which would be 2x. The derivative of 10 over 15 is 0, and the derivative of negative 1 15, 1x over 15 is negative 1 15th. Cleaning this up, the 2 and the 10 would cancel and leave us with a 5. We'll move the negative exponent back down to the bottom. And so we would end up with the x still at the top. The bottom would be 5 square root of 1 plus x squared minus 1 15th. 
So to find the critical point, we set that derivative equal to zero. Let's get some space here to figure this out. So I'll set t prime of t equal to zero, and we would get zero equals x over five square root of one plus x squared minus one fifteenth. Move the one fifteenth over, we get one fifteenth equals x over 5 square root 1 plus x squared, cross multiply, we would get 5 square root 1 plus x squared equals 15x. We can take away the 5 there, divide both sides by 5, and we would end up with the square root of 1 plus x squared equals 3x. Square both sides we'd get 1 plus x squared equals 9x squared. Collect like terms, we get 1 equals 9x squared minus 1x squared would be 8x squared. So 1 eighth equals x squared. So x would be the square root of 1 eighth. And of course, we're only interested in the positive square root in this case for the distance. And if we plug that into the calculator, we end up with about 0.3536. So that would be the distance from P to Q here, So which would be 0.3536 kilometers. So if we can find a subway stop close to about 0.3536 kilometers away from P, Hopefully this will be allow us to minimize that time. But let's make sure, let's confirm that we do have a minimum there and what that time would be.